Okay, everybody. Well, hey, uh, we're here for uh, another quick session on business organizations. I uh, spoke the last time on uh, limited liability partnerships. I kind of will have to admit to you that, you know, human, I kind of got things in reverse order there. So, should have covered limited partnerships first. Some similarities, a limited partnership has a general partner who is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the partnership, and then he has limited partners, okay? Remember that the main uh, thing about taxation is all of the profits pass through uh, and go to uh, all of the investors, which are the general and the limited partners if they are invested. Uh, if the general has nothing in it, then he gets a certain share of the profits and he's taxed on that. Whereas the limited partners, if they put in the investment, then they get, uh, they get taxed on their investment. Now remember too, that for taxation purposes, the partnership does not get taxed, but they are required to submit what we call an informational, informational, tax return, informational. What that meaning is the profits and how they're divided and everything are in this informational um, tax form and then, they, and then they go and compare that to the partners and make sure that they're both telling the IRS and the Indiana Department of Revenue the same thing. So that's an important part right there. Another important thing, which I did not cover, is how these limited partnerships can be used uh, in um, uh, family estate planning situations. It can be very good. Let's say that this guy at one time, he was like a sole proprietorship of a small print shop, and he wants to change the form to a limited partnership where he's still running everything. He still calls all the shots. But he's actually, what he's trying to do is giving gifts to his kids, family, you know, all this, so that they can share in the profits during his lifetime, but uh, they do not, you know, basically have to really put any money into it at all. The money is really coming from the general partnership. But what he's trying to do is divest himself slowly of the ownership uh, of this business and th this can be done in a corporation as well in the form of shares of stock uh, but basically in a uh, partnership uh, uh, basically uh, there is this requirement then that limited partnership have uh, some degree uh, of uh, investment in the property but in this would be like investment by gift now another thing that's important in these, and I can't stress it enough, is that there has to be a partnership certificate, okay? And the way you get that partnership certificate in a limited partnership is there, it has to be in writing, it has to be filed with the state. So you can have these kind of informal partnerships, but in a limited partnership that has to be in writing, has to be filed with the state. So you get what's called a certificate. So you get a, well, as I said, certified, you get a certificate uh, of partnership, okay? And that comes from the Secretary of State, okay? So that's a, another important uh, concept. So keep, keep that in mind as well. Um, now, uh, another thing that's really important is that the uh, a partnership can have an agent. Uh, they can pick an agent through the state. They actually pay him a fee. Uh, sometimes this fee is a substantial amount of money, uh, but sometimes it's usually not that much. Uh, you just pay an annual fee to an agent, and their only job is to accept service of process, okay? So the, the point of that is if you're gonna get sued, uh, basically they accept the papers, uh, the advantage of this for the partnership is uh, sometimes papers like that can be left uh, uh, in the place and it blows away, you know, uh, and so what this does is make sure that the ownership, the leadership, and the agent know, well, who's to get these papers so that if a deputy or somebody just drops by or a process server, 
leaves it on the front step and it blows off, then you don't get defaulted for that. So very important uh, and so basically uh, is available. A lot of people don't use them, uh, but there can be you know benefits uh, and uh, so um, you know for people who uh, want to um, you know be particularly safe uh, rather than sorry it's probably a good idea. Now one thing I did say is that the certificate has to be in writing you know the application for the certificate has to be in writing but you do not have to put all the terms of your agreement as partners uh, in that. So it's a little bit different than a corporation because um, basically you don't have to limit yourself to have the whole thing in writing. It can only just be the application itself. It'll want to know who the limited partners are, who the general partner is, and so forth. So it's pretty perfunctory stuff. It's pretty basic. Uh, so, you know, even though I say it does have to be in writing, uh, the whole thing doesn't have to be in writing. Uh, okay, so basically, even though we say there is a limited partnership certificate, there is an application, that doesn't mean that it has to be really, really detailed. Uh, one thing, too, is that a person can basically withdraw, in other words, sell out their shares, as it were, in a limited partnership, so you can, you can leave the partnership, you don't have to stay in it, but you have to give the other owners uh, six months notice, okay? So six months, you have to let them know that you plan to leave the limited partnership. So once you give them six months notice, the idea behind that is it's almost like first right of refusal. What's ended up happening is you put them on notice, so they've got to come up with the money to buy you out. Uh, if they don't do that within that six months, and you can sell it to anybody that you want to. So that's pretty important as well. Uh, okay, let me see. One thing I would say too is you know that the gift uh, statute would apply to the uh, uh, general partner who's given away his sole proprietorship in the form of a limited partnership. Uh, and so there are limitations on just how much you can give each person. So <coughs> limited partnership would be a good way to go for a moderately sized family, maybe four kids or something like that. But if it gets too large uh, and you've got other people you want to include and all this kind of stuff, then it can become too cumbersome. And here again, you might as well go with a limited liability corporation. So these are some important points. I wanted to add, uh, and so um, you know, keep that in mind. One last thing I want to touch on is that uh, people uh, in one state uh, can uh, operate in other states, but here again, they have to what we call domesticate that partnership in the other state. So um, one of the things that we get into is that. Um, you know, there's a whole nother form that you have to file for uh, what we call domestication certificate. So you have to put the state on notice that you plan on doing business in that state. Now, one of the things too is there are requirements that not only that you file that certificate, but that informational return, like I said, make sure the tax return, some other documents like that not only have to be filed with the IRS, but they do need to be filed with the state. So that's something else to consider. Well, hey, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, here again, I'm here for you if you need me at robdaywalt at me.com. So feel free to get a hold of me if you're having concerns or problems and you're not clear on what's going on. Thank you very much.